good morning students the topic that we are going to discuss today is management of man made disasters okay the previous topic was management of natural disasters one thing that is common to both is the disaster management cycle which i will explain in this but it can be applied for the natural disasters also so let us see what the disaster management cycle is all about okay i'll just make it little zoom it out if you see this is the disaster for example if there is a bomb blast here there is a bomb blast okay that is the disaster immediately after the disaster there is a response okay what is the response along with that there is assessment okay so that means when there is a disaster the people who rescue the other people they will have a immediate assessment and they will respond to the natural disaster what response they will try to save the people's life they will take them to the hospital and they will do all the needed things and they will also give immediate relief so on the spot they will give first aid they will send them to the hospital and do all the things that is necessary for the people so this happens in the immediate time after the disaster then later there will be reconstruction and rehabilitation reconstruction is for the uh, non people things that is the buildings the other things that were damaged so we have to reconstruct those things rehabilitation is for the people so it is based on uh, people's perspective we will try to treat them and we will try to if they are uh, if their leg is broken then rehabilitate them or if they have lost their jobs then give them a new job so that kind of thing so this is the response after the uh, disaster then it leads to prevention either the disaster management can start from prevention mitigation preparedness and then if there is a disaster we can go like this or after a disaster we do this cycle and then we try to prevent the next disaster so that is why it's called a disaster management cycle so next we will do prevention mitigation and preparedness for all this prepare preparation we will see each one in detail preparation mitigation and preparedness one thing that is common is the capacity building which is written here capacity building means training so we have to train the people that is the public we have to train the disaster management people in methods of prevention mitigation and preparation so in spite of all this again there can be a disaster for example a cyclone just because we have we think of prevention mitigation and we are prepared we cannot say cyclone will never come it will come every year it will come so next year the response should be better the relief should be better assessment should be quick and reconstruction and rehabilitation should be quicker and then whatever falls we find we again learn from that and do prevention mitigation preparedness by capacity building and then we face the next cyclone so this cycle will keep going and that is the disaster management this this is common for all uh, all uh, disasters whether it is man made or whether it is natural so this is a common thing which you can write for every question if they ask about a disaster you can draw this diagram and write prevention mitigation and then preparedness and uh, how capacity building is important capacity building or training the people who are involved is important and then immediately after a disaster the assessment is done and response is given immediate relief is there and then later stage reconstruction and rehabilitation is uh, important so let us zoom out and then we'll go to the remaining part so this is what i have explained to you so what is mitigation mitigation is minimizing the effect of the disaster how can we minimize the effect of disaster by building codes zoning having a vulnerability analysis then public education the next thing is preparedness how to respond to the disaster so before the disaster occurs you know once a disaster occurs how you will respond for example in our mind sometimes we think if we go to a building suppose a fire happens how we will escape so we should look at the how uh, different exits and nearest exit we should come out so this is how we prepare our mind and or uh, make plans for the uh, preparation of a of facing a disaster 
then response that is how we can minimize the hazards created by a disaster hazard is risk so by search and rescue emergency relief we can minimize the hazard created by a disaster and then we can return the community to normal by recovering we can give temporary housing grants and medical care so what is mitigation mitigation is eliminating or reducing the probability of disaster occurrence that is sometimes you can eliminate the probability if it's a man made disaster you can eliminate the probability of disaster but if it's natural disaster you can only try to reduce the chance and even after that it may be unavoidable that a disaster happens then you can do vulnerability analysis vulnerability means who is at high risk which buildings are at high risk which people are at high risk and those people should be identified and given proper training and uh, awareness then if it is uh, for floods and things like that we can do zoning i have already talked about that in previously so we can do zoning land management building use regulations and then health care all this is mitigation phase so this is very important part of the management cycle and it will help the government to make policies so that mitigation is given priority so this will reduce the loss of life and property if it is properly done the next phase is the preparedness so once you know you have done the mitigation next you have to be prepared so uh, preparation is you are already may always mentally prepared for any kind of disaster so when it happens you will be able to face it easily so how can we prepare we have to ensure that we have enough food reserves equipment for example we always see a child falling into the bore well we hear about it in the news but each time is the government prepared for it are the people prepared for it no we we try to do all things from the beginning and there is no preparation but this is a one it affects one person at a time but if it's a natural disaster the government gives priority and tries to ensure that Uh, they are prepared for cyclones so every year if you see in the summer months all the canals are widened by the government so that during monsoon if it rains and it the flood comes then the water will flow easily into the sea so that is preparation also always they keep food in the food corporation of india go down so that whenever there is a crisis situation like the current pandemic the food can be used for the people so these kind of things are Uh, preparations also communication devices emergency management uh, like having a good healthcare system hospitals and uh, people involved so all these keeping it ready is the preparedness for the uh, emergency disaster system then is the response so once the disaster happens then immediately we have to give the best kind of uh, chance to maintain life something is called the golden hour that is the first hour after a disaster or accident or anything is the time to save the lives maximum lives can be saved in this first hour because that is the time the injured people can be taken to the hospital immediate first aid first aid and care is given and their lives can be saved so this is the response and the other the aspects of response is providing transport temporary shelter food to people who are affected in floods and cyclones and other tsunamis and other disasters or even man made disasters and once this shelter food and transport is given and then the next phase is uh, recovery phase in the recovery phase it is much more uh, little medium term aspect it is not the immediate aftermath after a disaster what we can do is we have to restore the lives and infrastructure of the people so the people who are affected in the disaster have to recover so that they can lead a normal life they can go back to their regular life it may be difficult because they will still be having psychological problems socio economic problems and all the other disaster dimensions but what we can do is we can ensure that they recover as early as possible so that in the long term they will be able to lead a near normal life and they will go back to their original life so there should be a smooth transition from the recovery to the regular life so this is important aspect so for recovery we have to provide them all their needs 
లైక్ టెంపరీ హౌసింగ్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ హెల్త్ అండ్ సేఫ్టీ రీకన్స్ట్రక్షన్ కౌన్సిలింగ్ దెన్ దీస్ విల్ హెల్ప్ ద పర్సన్ టు రికవర్ అండ్ గో బ్యాక్ టు లివ్ అ నార్మల్ లైఫ్ సో దట్ ఈస్ అబౌట్ ది డిసాస్టర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ సైకిల్ అండ్ ఆల్సో డిఫరెంట్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ మిటిగేషన్ ప్రిపరేషన్ దెన్ రెస్పాన్స్ అండ్ రికవరీ సో విల్ గో ఇన్ టు ద ఫస్ట్ టాపిక్ విచ్ ఈస్ హౌస్ హోల్డ్ కెమికల్ ఎమర్జెన్సీ so there are several reasons for man made emergency disasters okay this is also common to all man made disasters why do man made disaster occur because of ignorance because of not being aware of the risk illiteracy or carelessly handling things for example if a, in for example the visakhapatnam gas leak you know in visakhapatnam there was a gas leak and a lot of people died it is still fresh in your memories because you would have seen whatsapp videos of people just falling and collapsing and dying on the road so why did this happen because the people were ignorant the people near the uh, gas leak area if they had been properly told that there is a risk in the area there is a gas leak they will there is a risk of death will they go there no so they were ignorant then they were not aware even on that day when people were this thing there were a lot of vehicles passing through that area so people think that it will not affect them they are not aware of the seriousness and illiteracy educated people usually respond they have more fear of the unknown and they try to take precautions whereas illiterate people do not understand the seriousness of some of the problems and they are very careless so these are common reasons why man made disasters become very severe or serious okay so especially for chemical emergency house in the house the things that you have to remember is the people have to know how to handle chemicals okay so if they know how to handle chemicals half of the risk is gone the first thing is they should use protective equipment like gloves not the normal rubber gloves but thick gloves which will prevent the chemical from falling on the hand or even if it spills it will not damage the skin so that kind of protective equipment if it is a gaseous chemical then they have to protect the eyes also by wearing goggles so like that we have to wear protective equipment something like how we wear ppes for the coronavirus prevention so that kind of protective equipment will prevent chemicals from causing damage then in case a chemical injury has occurred then the correct treatment has to be given and it has to be given very quickly so that the risk is minimized and area where the chemical agents exist have to be avoided so for example if you keep chemicals in your house in a store room do not visit the store room very often unless it is necessary going there very often is increasing the risk of it falling down then decontaminate your equipment and body as soon as possible for example if chemical is fallen on you or or on some of your equipments or things what you have to do is if you have to decontaminated for example if a acid falls on your body then you have to make it alkaline so when you handle acid itself you have to know that you have to keep precaution things like alkaline things are nearby and you have to take immediate steps to decontaminate the area okay so other methods in which you can prevent household emergency is by making a household inventory what is a inventory you make a list of the things which are there in the house which are chemically dangerous so for example in any house if you have kerosene that is risky because it is hazardous children can drink it thinking it's water or something so it can cause serious damage so kerosene if you have any spirit in the house to clean things and if you have any benzene or motor oil so these are things which are commonly kept in every house and sometimes even chemicals to spray for the uh, garden things like that people who do not know about the chemical uh, especially your children old people or any visitors to your house they can misunderstand and use that uh, by drinking it or something okay so you have to make a list of all the chemical things which are in your house and where they are available also 
you try to keep them in the original packing sometimes what people do is if you buy kerosene you put it in a bisleri bottle so people will think it is drinking water or juice and they will drink, drink it because it's in a drinking bottle so keep it in the original containers then if you have any leftover chemicals try to use it or throw it away if you store it you should have proper storage methods otherwise you give it off okay then you have to keep the products in the original packing which i have told already and you have to ensure that these things are kept away from children or people who meddle with those things so children are the ones who are at high risk for chemical uh, emergencies because they drink it or uh, pour it on themselves okay and if you do not know the effects do not mix chemical things together you know whenever two chemicals are mixed there is a chemical reaction sometimes it can be causing an explosion so some risks are there so try to keep all the chemical materials separately and follow the manufacturer's instruction never smoke or use other chemicals near a open flame for example we get so many whatsapp videos of how people use uh, some chemicals which spray for the birthdays near a fire and suddenly it catches fire or even uh, your deodorant spray near a open flame it catches fire so never smoke cigarettes or never use chemicals near a open flame and once you have finished using the chemical you dispose of dispose it in the proper way you have to find out how to dispose each chemicals do not just throw it in your sink because sometimes it can cause your sink to burn or you don't do not throw it in the uh, dustbin because people who handle the dustbins they will get injuries so you should know how to discard a chemical and you should do it safely so to prevent injuries next thing is during a household chemical emergency what to do some of the common chemical emergencies is either a fire explosion or some uh, chemical falling on the person or somebody drinking the chemical so if these things happen immediately you have to inform the hospital or the 108 ambulance and go to the hospital if you know any first aid you try to give first aid but if you do not know first aid you have to go immediately to the hospital the ambulance people will give first aid they will know what to do there the some of the signs which can happen when you have chemical poisoning is difficulty in breathing irritation of the eyes skin throat respiratory tract change in the skin color or burns in that particular area dizziness headache blurred vision or some people will be clumsy that is they will drop things they will not be able to have uh, grip and they will have lack of coordination and if they have drunk it they'll have diarrhea or stomach pain cramps so these are some of the signs and symptoms when people have taken uh, chemicals so after a chemical emergency try to clean up that area and get rid of all the things so that the place is completely uh, rid of all the chemicals and then if it is uh, something which can spread you can disinfect the area and make sure that all the things are thrown away in the proper manner so that another emergency does not occur so this is about household chemical emergency next thing in the topic is terrorism what is terrorism we all know terrorism we all think pakistan fighting against india is terrorism but that is one aspect of terrorism most of it is some some of the terrorism you won't even be able to see that is cyber attacks using uh, computers but there are other open terrorisms that we know about one well known terrorist act was the uh, in india was the mumbai attack where people from other countries they came and started shooting the people and throwing bombs and killing many hundreds of people another terrorist act which the world knows is the uh, twin tower blast in america where some terrorists went in a plane and flew the plane right into the big building so these are terrorist acts so what is terrorism terrorism is defined as the illegitimate or against the law illegitimate means against the law use of threat or violence to further political objectives usually terrorism is to ensure that one's political views are uh, known to the other people and the others will follow it it is also used to create fear among the public 
to make people and think that their government is unable to protect them for example if some terrorist attacks indians what will the indian people think that the government is not able to protect them so that is the impression that the terrorists wants the people to get that is why they involve in terrorist attacks so let's see what are the types of terrorist attacks or the acts of terrorism assassination that is killing a political leader kidnapping hijacking that is plane or bus or uh, hijacking bomb bombing cyber attacks which are computer based and the use of chemical biological radiological and nuclear weapons these are some of the common terrorist attacks so who are the high risk targets usually these terrorist attacks are aimed at government buildings places where international people live like, like international airports international hotels and buildings and high profile landmark for example if in the city the biggest building or the largest building or an iconic building or a culturally sensitive building these are area or a religious place these are the places where terrorists usually target and also in places where the public gather in large numbers so that the impact will be large and they will be able to injure and kill many people so these are the common targets for terrorists okay so let us see the methods of destruction by terrorists first thing is the use of weapons of mass destruction that is many people can be killed or injured you when the terrorist use this weapons of mass destruction the first it method is the chemical agents that is they use chemicals for example there are things like one is the nerve gas there is called a sarin nerve gas which was released into the underground metro train in tokyo japan which caused the death of lot of people so we have already seen chemical agents and how they can uh, cause damage in the house but when terrorists do it they do it in a public place in a large scale so that many people can be affected sometimes they throw it into the water body so that people who drink the water can get uh, affected they also th- uh, spray it from the sky through aircrafts so these are some of the uh, methods in which terrorists can attack and the chemical agents are usually colorless and odorless and also tasteless so it can spread easily before people understand the effects and it will also affect a lot of people sometimes it can affect within 2 hours or sometimes even after 48 hours then the next one is the biological agent it is an organism or toxin so biological agent means virus uh, so some people that's why they say coronavirus is a biological agent that is it was created by man to spread among the public to create death and destruction okay it may be true it may not be true but there are other types of uh, biological agents that have been used in the past uh, for example anthrax is one spore which was used in america which was sent by post by terrorists to many people and lot of people died so uh, biological agents can be spread by aerosol that is through the air through explosives through food or water contamination and it includes bacteria virus spores and other toxins so even the animals can carry the toxins and it can spread among the humans one example of a non uh, of biological agent affecting lot of people is anthrax so same way just like coronavirus is spreading uh, even man made viruses can be spread among the people so that many people are affected and the con- other countries economy can collapse okay so that is biological agent then radiological agents that is radiation there are you would have studied in your 12th standard that in chemistry that some uh, elements and some chemicals can cause radiation so this radiation and also in uh, all our uh, atomic industries radiation occurs so in kalpakam and kudangulam they are all nuclear reactors so their radiation can happen one of the ways in which people died because of radiation is in nagasaki and hiroshima where the americans bombed during world war 2 and chernobyl which is in russia which was a nuclear disaster site so radiation can cause ionizing exposure 
and burns sometimes the people will not immediately have effects but it can also have long term effects and the children can be born with deformities so these are all radiological uh, agents that can cause serious problems in the people then nuclear blast for example nuclear blast when there is a nuclear attack then it can lead to nuclear blast usually the governments protect their nuclear uh, arsenal or nuclear uh, uh, explosives but sometimes terrorists can get their hands on nuclear equipment and that can lead to nuclear attack then cyber attack these days it is very easier for terrorists to use the cyber attacks that is they go to the government website for example if the government of india website is there the terrorists go to the government of india website and they feed all wrong information and use the hacking as a method of cyber attack so they can steal uh, information about the country they can put wrong information about the country and lead to terrorist attacks in this way but the most common form in which terrorists attack is through bomb explosions so let us see bomb explosions a little more in detail so what are the common injuries that people get when there is a bomb blast see when there is a bomb blast there are various factors that determine how much you can be injured so for example here we will see the primary injury secondary injuries what is the primary injury suddenly there is a when there is a bomb blast there is air pressure variation this can lead to injuries secondly when the bomb blast there are lot of materials which are thrown which can hit the people and cause damage thirdly the person who is affected due to the bomb blast they can their body can be thrown off so that can lead to injuries so these are the ways in which people get injuries through the uh, fire which is caused by the bomb blast or the bomb blast itself or through the debris which is fa- fa- falling at a fast pace because of the bomb blast then what are the types of injuries one is a pulmonary blast injury that is the thoracic the breathing or the pulmonary areas are affected so the person's airway is affected and they are not able to bleed uh, breathe or and their lungs can be affected then the next injury is the head injury so usually head injuries when they fall down or when the chest injuries because some hit something hits the chest so chest and head injuries are common other things are usually uh, non life threatening that is fracture soft tissue injuries these are Uh, common and sometimes they can uh, lose their e- uh, hearing eyesight b- local burns these are all non threatening usually but sometimes they can also be thre- life threatening and some of them lose their limbs like hand is gone or leg is gone that is also effect of injury and bomb blast then what are the factors which help in the survival the f- there are different factors for example how much Uh, distance that is from a bomb blast to the victim that is if you are far away from the bomb blast less injury if you are close to the bomb blast more injury then how much speed how much intensity of the bomb that is if the bomb is very powerful then more people will get damage severe damage and less powerful less injuries and the site of injury where the place of your body where you have injured it will depend on your survival chance and the availability of medical resources very close if you are in a remote area then the chances of survival will be less and again here i explained about the golden hour in the introduction the golden hour is very important because it is the first hour after a any disaster or any trauma or any accident so within the first hour if you take the patient if you give first aid and take the person to a hospital then the ch- chances of survival are much higher if the f- if there is delayed if there is delayed treatment and you do not take the person to the hospital in the first hour then the chances of recovery are very less and the person can even die so let's see the management phases at a disaster see what are the management phases at a disaster scene the first phase there will be chaos chaotic phase that means 
immediately after a terrorist attack nobody will know what happened everybody will be rushing here and there they will be thinking what happened so usually it takes about 15 20 minutes for people to understand that it is a terrorist attack and there has been a bomb blast or some other terrorist kind of attack then the reorganization phase where somebody takes the leadership or a police people come or some anti terrorist act- uh, people come and they take the uh, lead and that is the reorganization phase then the site clearing phase if there is a bomb blast or any other disaster man made uh, terrorist attack then they clear the place within the first 100 to 180 minutes and the last phase that is up to 48 hours they police people will be reconstructing how it happened what happened and they will try to uh, get clues so that they can catch the criminals so what are the phases which we can do about the uh, disaster management first is the pre disaster planning for terrorist attacks surveillance is very important that is the police the uh, army and the intelligence agencies okay these people have to make sure that there is no terrorist and they have to prevent the terrorist attacks by giving proper surveillance that is they have to check the bags of every person in the airport or in the railway station before they board their vehicles and they also have to check the terrorist uh, communications so they have to keep constant track and they have to find out if the terrorists are planning anything and this should be properly uh, informed to the higher authorities then the community disaster plan and drill especially in cities there is always a drill that in case there is a terrorist attack how to take care of the situation so people will try to do drills on a regular basis then during the disaster the people who are involved in the disaster have to take cover immediately they have to stay low on the floor and listen to the radio or tv for updates and as soon as the terrorist attack is over they have to be evacuated so that their lives are saved and after the disaster what are the things that needs to be done so after the disaster we have to stay away from the affected area because sometimes there may be a second blast or secondary damage or a terrorist who is hiding can again start shooting so it is better for people who are not involved in the police work or this thing disaster management work to stay away from the disaster site then we should check for people who are injured and they have to be given immediate first aid and taken to the hospital because of the golden hour is being very important then if you have involved in the terrorist uh, attack and if you have saved then you inform your family members so that they are not worried then try to use phone services very less because usually after a terrorist attack the phone services are affected and it should be open for emergency services and you can listen to radio and tv for the latest information and uh, if there is any property damage you have to in- inform the insurance agent so that you can get a refund or you will be able to be rehabilitated and just like any other disaster the rehabilitation phase and the recovery phase will follow for individuals who are affected in the disaster so that they are taken back to a near normal life they may not be able to have a normal life because of the loss that they suffered either personal loss physically or a loved one being dead or injured or there may be permanent loss of limbs these things can happen but they have to get back to a near normal life and that is done through the recovery and rehabilitation after a terrorist attack so this is the man made disaster for today the remaining topics we'll see in the next class thank you